The content sometimes, I think, is not nearly as important as we, as teachers, might think. In other words, we don't need to have all this content laid out in a sequential way and make sure we cover this and then this and then this and then this, right? That's really not what Teaching No Greater Call is helping us learn about, about teaching. And earlier today, you told me about an example of a Sunday school class. I thought it was tremendous. Just, just share that for a second. Well, I think it emphasizes exactly what you're talking about is at the beginning of the lesson, it, we started off with a traditional format where the teacher was passing slips of paper with things to read on them. So it went out and started passing those out. Will you read this? Will you read this? Which and, is a method that probably we invented in the church and I've never seen used anywhere else. Nor have I. In I, the world. I've, I've been a lot of places. I've never seen anyone in a professional sense use this pass the slips out routine. With a little number on the top. Right. Oh, not, not, that it's a bad, not that it's a bad method. No. But it's probably overused in the church. But wh what happened? To the this? nice thing about this, because I, I started getting into autopilot mode because I thought, okay, well, if this is going to be yeah. autopilot type of an experience where this might be the only method of teaching, I'll just wait until my number is called, etc. But as we started to teach and the class started to unfold, a comment would come out. And rather than the teacher dismissing the comment and said, we need to get onto my papers, he, he allowed the, the class to unfold. It was evident that he was prepared. And he was prepared well enough that as the comments started to come in, then comments would build on the next comment, the next comment. He would guide and direct. Well, as I was mentioning to you, by the end of the class, we never read one single one of the slips of paper. And I actually went up to him afterwards and I said, I wanted to thank you for the experience because this was a great example of teaching people not lessons. He was prepared. Yeah. Yeah. And I imagine, I don't know because all the slips were passed out. I said, you had, you must have had what, eight, nine slips? He goes, actually I had 12. And, and he had all these slips. 12 slips. 12 slips. But and we may have covered those. He carefully cut out <laughs> and oh. made sure that he could pass them all out. And then he chose not to use them, which in this case was inspired. Right? I believe it was inspired. It was a wonderful lesson. And as a matter of fact, afterwards, I was thinking about the principles and the practices that are outlined in Teaching No Greater Call, the resource guide of how many things that he was doing, probably not knowing that he was doing by allowing the lesson to come forth with the learners. I mean, that was right. really was taking place rather than letting the lesson that he prepared dominate um, his experience and guiding the opportunity for learning. It was masterfully done, and I don't even know if he realized how great it was. It was great. So he, he prepared a lesson, but when he got there, he taught the learners. Absolutely. So the lesson manual was the preparing device rather than right. the delivery advice. Right. And so he was right. prepared to deliver, but he allowed that experience to unfold. Well, and the beauty of it all is that the spirit directs the work. And so when the class members are able to participate and the teacher is prepared and can help in that delivery process and, and uh, communication process, then the spirit's able to work with each class member and, and with the teacher. And the teacher may learn as much in that process as the class members are learning because he's now learning from those class members that are participating. And in reality, he probably covered all the material that he was intending to cover. That's a good point. I imagine place. that's probably yeah. true. I, I don't know for sure, but I bet yeah. that was true. In the, he was always on topic. Oh, right? he was. I mean, he, was all, he, he didn't deviate and just kind of go all over the place. He right? never did. And as, yeah. as is typical in most learning environments, especially yeah. within the gospel, there were comments that were, right. were a little bit off into the left field and sometimes trying to take it other places and stuff. But it was interesting what happened was he didn't do that. And he allowed the opportunity to almost shepherd individuals back. But here's an interesting thing that also happened is individuals in the classroom wouldn't let it stray either because they were so engaged in the experience that if a topic started to edge off of where we were talking about, other class members would bring it straight back onto topic as well. It was kind of like what we were learning the Doctrine and Covenants. We were being edified all together. All together. All together. And it wasn't just the teacher's job to taskmaster it, but it was an edifying experience because of techniques, um, the way that he presented it, the, the preparation of content, all of these things work together like threads in a tapestry to make a great experience.